We're broadcasting from the Eisenman booth at the Fuel Ethanol Workshop in St. Louis. Joining us now is Mark West, president of Eisenman. Now, Eisenman is a global environmental solutions provider to the ethanol industry, and they are based, their U.S. headquarters, based just outside of Chicago. Mark, good to see you again. The last time you and I talked, we were talking about your new biogas technology. Where does that stand? That's right. I believe that was at the, uh, the RFA uh, in February. Uh, where that stands, we announced it publicly at that, uh, that conference, and um, we've had very good uh, feedback from the ethanol producers, a lot of interest, a number of uh, interested plants that we've gone through uh, design basis, and there's a very strong ROI, good return. Um, one of the big issues we keep facing, though, which I think a lot of equipment manufacturers are, are facing in the industry, is the, uh, the financing. And uh, unfortunately, things are very tight with the banking industry right now, uh, the ethanol space itself is not a popular one to be in, uh, as far as the banks are concerned. So you, uh, you have a couple different schools of thought. You have banks that are already in the space, they've already have exposure, um, and they're more worried about the plant paying uh, down the debt and servicing the debt, and they don't want the plant to take on more debt. Um, so that's that's one big issue. Then the the other banks that uh, are interested don't know the space, the ethanol space. So. Um, it's a matter of do you spend the time to educate them, and then they uh, they can make a decision. But that takes you know quite a bit of time. Um, so it's it's very tough right now. So are those the biggest challenges facing your company right now? Yeah, I don't think there's any question at all um, from the producer's standpoint that our technology is viable. It will work. It will help them. Uh, everyone recognizes that we will offset natural gas consumption at the plant to the tune of 15 to 20 percent. Um, and, and once we have a full-scale commercial system running on this application, we're going to be able to prove a lot of other things uh, that will even reduce the ROI further. Uh, but, yeah, financing is, is really the biggest obstacle. So, um, you know, we're starting to get creative, which I think some other equipment suppliers are starting to do with the corneal extraction, uh, where they finance projects themselves. Um, you know, we're looking at special um, purpose entities, forming those kind of as a mezzanine-type approach. Um, for finance. What is mezzanine finance? Well, what we would do is um, you have the, the plant and, say, the, the equipment uh, manufacturer would set up a, a, a separate um, company, more or less, and uh, the plant would pay in some equity, the equipment supplier would pay in equity, maybe even other outside investors, and essentially that would fund the uh, purchase of the capital equipment. Um, and then the plant, in turn, would, would buy the natural gas produced from our system uh, from that special purpose entity. And, uh, and there's, there's very strong ROI, um, so the, the project can be paid back in uh, four years or less many times. Um, so that's, that's what we're looking at right now, exploring. Now that's the key, that ROI, because what I'm hearing here at this conference and throughout the industry, they're excited about this new technology that takes them into that next generation of biofuels production. But you said that they have to be able to get the, the financing to make it happen because really that technology like you are offering will allow the first generation ethanol plants to be able to be viable into the second generation. It's, it's really taking that first gen and optimizing it as much as possible. And uh, that's why you have plants looking at Cornell extraction, finding other revenue streams for, for byproducts. Uh, and that's really the key for us is trying to improve the operating margin of those plants. I and mean, that's what the banks are concerned about is being able to have enough money margin left over to service the debt. Um, and right now, you know, over the last four or five months, there hasn't been a lot of strong margin. Uh, so that they're looking for guarantees in the future of that margin. And, um, you know, it's just it's, it's been tough out there uh, as far as the oil prices have been relatively low and uh, the crush spread has been, has been low, margins are low. So. Let's talk about anaerobic digesters. It, it seems like maybe, well, that's not a new concept, certainly. We're starting maybe to get some renewed interest in that and people looking at it more closely. What's the key there to going that way, and what are the advantages? Well, anaerobic digestion's been around for, for a long time. Um, we've, we have systems uh, installed all over Europe, and uh, in Europe they actually incentivize the production of electricity with, with biogas. Um, and they, they give extremely high incentives. In the U.S., we don't have any incentives like that. Uh, we think that's coming down the road, and that'll be even better ROI for these plants. Uh, right now, we're just trying to produce methane to offset the uh, natural gas consumption of the plant. Um, 
for us, it's a proven technology. We've done it. We've done 80 plants in Europe. It's, it's uh, tweaking it for this application, and we spent over a year um, piloting this technology on this specific application. And uh, so we're very confident it works. The customers we're talking to are very confident it works, and it's just back down to the, the financing. So much as we move forward, it looks like in the energy industry is going to be about that carbon footprint. And so that has to be a big part of any future plans for an ethanol plant. Right. And that's, and that's what we're doing is we're taking uh, natural gas that would be burned and we're, we're creating biogas, which is essentially methane, from a waste stream at the plant. So we're reducing the carbon footprint of that plant, the uh, greenhouse gases, uh, things like that. Um, you know, I think what's what's interesting is we were we were supporting the ethanol industry for the last 10 years prior to the big boom, um, and then we had things you know drop off with the economic downturn. And while the downturn occurred, we actually kept investing and in, in creating uh, innovative ideas and ways for the plants to reduce their their costs um, and increase their margins. And uh, you know we're we're in it for the long haul. Um, you know I think there's a lot of hangers on that have tried to come into the industry and kind of following. Um, and not bringing a lot of new ideas and innovations. Um, but you have companies you know, like ours, uh, the ICMs, and always trying to think of new things and adding value uh, to the ethanol producer and, and allowing them to uh, operate profitably. So looking to the future now, as you talk with ethanol plants, uh, what is your message to them as far as how together you can go into this next generation? Well, I, I think the key is to analyze the, uh, the overall operation of the plant and to make sure it's optimized as much as possible. Are they capturing all the potential revenue that they could? Are they lowering the operating costs as much as they could? And um, we have a, you know, out of the 200 plants that were built, um, uh, we, pr we have a target list that uh, could greatly benefit from, from our process. And we're talking to each one of them and, and looking at uh, their, their financial uh, situation. You know, any plant that's built after 2007, 2008, they have still a lot of debt on their books. Anything that was built prior to that, um, you know, they've paid down their debt considerably and they're probably a better candidate for us. So, uh, so what are you hearing? Uh, is there growing interest now that we're starting to see some recovery in the industry after a tough couple of years? Are you seeing more interest? There's definitely interest and uh, we, will, we will have installations soon. Uh, it's a matter of piecing together the puzzle of, of how the, uh, the money flows. And uh, it's very frustrating. There's government programs. Uh, USDA loan guarantees, things like that. Um, but unless there is some kind of guaranteed margin uh, that can be projected out in the future by the banks, they, they just have no interest. It is kind of frustrating and ironic. We work so hard to get, you know, required use of of ethanol, but that did not go. What did not come along with that was required production of ethanol, and, and so we're caught now trying to meet the demands that we have set. Right, and, uh, and I think th the key will be the, uh, the next generation of, of biofuels and how that plays out, you know, because there's requirements now that aren't being met with advanced biofuels, um, and it just keeps ramping up in the future. Um, but as, as we saw today at the, uh, at the conference, you see how efficient things have become over the last few years, and uh, I think you know, the market conditions will require that to be done, so we'll, we'll find a way. You know, companies that are innovating will find a way to, to help the plants. Mike Eisenman. Thanks, Mark. All right. Thank you, Mike. Mark West, the president of Eisenman. Again, uh, new technology, the real key for the ethanol industry to move into that second generation. As we broadcast from the Fuel Ethanol Workshop in St. Louis, I'm Mike Adams.